Okay, welcome to part five of the ACT practice test okay, for 2020, 2021. This is form 1874 FPRE. Hey, if you go to the link at the bottom of, uh, of this page, uh, which I've also linked in the description below this video, uh, this is the official ACT preparing for the ACT guide. Uh, this is practice test number one. Right, so uh, we're uh, now in part five, which starts off at question number 41. Hey, we're going to be moving through 41 through 50, and then we'll wrap it up in the last video uh, with 51 through 60. Okay, uh, and if you haven't seen any of the other videos, there are are obviously four prior to this one, which cover questions numbers one through 40. There's a playlist available on my, uh, my page, so if you wanna start at problem number one and work your way through them with me, uh, you can go ahead and check out the playlist, uh, which I've also linked in the description below, okay? So let's start off with problem number 41. It's talking about a frequency chart, which is showing the cumulative number of Ms. Hernandez's science students who, whose test uh, scores fell within certain score ranges. All of the test scores are whole numbers. And the question here is, based on this chart, how many students have a test score in the 71 to 80 range? So the 71 to 80 range uh, encompasses essentially this one right here, right? We don't want to go above 80. So all of this information is really not helpful to us, okay? But what we do need to look at is the 65 to 70 range, right, encompasses 12 people. And then when we increase, right, the word cumulative means everything, right? Everything from the beginning, right? So uh, the next range also includes everything from 65 to 70, but then also includes people that are from 71 to 80. So if there are 12 people from 65 to 70, that means we only actually added one new person, and that one new person has something in the range from 71 to 80. So we're gonna say that the 71 to 80 students, there's only one new student, right? And then obviously we increase as we uh, increase the cap, okay? So that's all we have to do for 41. Okay, problem number 42, this is a log problem. So logarithms are an algebra two topic. Uh, if you are taking this early on, you might not have seen log yet in your algebra two class. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, explain it here, okay? So the problem says, the number of decibels D, there it is in the equation, produced by an audio source can be modeled by the equation D equals 10 times the log of I over K, capital I over K, where capital I is the sound intensity of the audio source and K is a constant. Constant just means it's a number that's not gonna change. There might be like a 300 here or something, okay? Whatever it is, they're not telling us what K is, they're just saying it's a constant. Okay, how many decibels are produced, so that's D, how, what is D, uh, by an audio source whose sound intensity but that's the I value, is a thousand times more than K. So here's what I wanna point out about this. They're not telling us what I is and they're not telling us what K is, but what they are telling us is what is the relationship between I and K. And what they're saying is, if I take a thousand times uh, the K value, I'll get I, right? So if I did something like, let me give, show you an example. Like if I, if I said that it's, uh, K, the K value is 10, right? Um, that means that if I have to take a thousand times more than that, that means that the I value would have to be 10,000, right? Another example would be if this was like a five, then this would have to be 5,000, right? Whatever it is, the relationship between I and K is known. If I take the K value, whatever that constant is, and I multiply it by five, that's going to give me the I value, right? So that's the relationship between them. Here's what I care about. This is a thousand, this is also a thousand, right? Essentially what's gonna happen is whatever I and K are, when you divide them, you will always get a thousand. So what I can do is I can rewrite this and say this is 10 times the log, right? Sorry, the log of, instead of writing I over K, I know that the relationship between I over K is always going to be 1000, okay? So from here on out, if you don't know a whole lot about log, here's something you can take from this. I'm gonna to go to my calculator, okay? And if you take a look at this button right here, next to the seven, there is a log button, okay? So as long as the problem does not have something like a, like a three hiding down here, which on the ACT they do not, okay? You're good to use this button, okay? So here's what this button does. If I type in exactly what's showing up, okay, in this problem, right, which is 10 log 1000, Here's what it's gonna look like, 10 times log of 1,000, okay? It's gonna tell me that the answer to that is 30, okay? So without going into a lot of detail about what exactly log is, here's what you need to take away from this. There is a log button on the calculator, and as long as you can find out what goes inside of those parentheses, 
right, you can use that log button to evaluate. And in this case, we find out that the final answer, the D value, is going to be choice G, which is 30. Okay? Problem 43. Mario plays basketball on a town league team. Uh, the table below shows his scoring statistics for the last season. How many points did he score all of last season? Okay? So they're saying that he made 80 attempts and he was 75% successful. He took 62 pointers, was 90% successful. He also took 63 pointers and he was 25% successful. So here's what we need to do. We need to multiply together the number of attempts, which is 80, times the percent as a decimal. So this would be like 0 0.75, 0 0.90, and 0 0.25, right? So I'm gonna do a little calculator work. I'm gonna bring up my calculator, okay? Here it is, okay? And we're gonna start off by saying point, or 80 attempts times 0 0.75. That's how many successful baskets he made, right? So if I go to my calculator, I'm gonna type in uh, 0.8 times 75, okay? And I'm gonna get a number. And I'm gonna type in 60, I'm sorry, let's fix that. I made a mistake, which will happen, right? 80, which is the number of uh, uh, one point free throws that I made times 0.75. Okay, so that is 60 successful attempts. Okay, and then if I take 60 attempts at two pointers times 0.90, okay, let's try that again. 60 times 0.90, that is 54 successful baskets. And then also 63 pointer attempts times 0.25. Let's try that again, times 0.25, 15 successful baskets, right? So I'm gonna take this information, okay, and I'm going to go back to my problem, and I'm just gonna write these numbers down, right? So I'm gonna say that the number of successful one pointers, okay, is 60, okay? The number of successful two pointers is 54, and successful three pointers is 15. Well, a three-pointer is worth three points, so I'm gonna say times three, that's 45. I'm gonna take 54 times two points, that's gonna be 108 points, and 60 times one we know is just 60, right? So if I add together 45 plus 60 plus 108, okay, I'm gonna get 213, choice letter C. That is the total number of points that he scored uh, in the previous season, okay? Problem 44, it says the graph of y equals x minus six is the standard, I'm sorry, in the standard xy coordinate plane. Which of the following transformations when applied to the graph of y equals the absolute value of x results in this graph, okay? So here's what you need to know about transformations, okay? Um, and, and the ACT primarily uh, talks about reflections and slides, translations, right? So here's what you need to know. If I started off with the absolute value of x, this is called the parent function, okay? If I add or subtract a number on the outside, like plus five or something out here, that causes the graph to go up and down. So if you notice h and j, right? It's talking about an up translation and a down translation, right? If that number six was being put on the outside instead, then I would say yes to up and down. But because it's not on the outside, right? And instead, we have a minus six that's on the inside of the absolute value, okay? It is not um, up and down, okay? <clears throat> so reflection, reflections only happen when there's a negative uh, at the front. That is not happening in this problem. Here's where you have to be careful though, okay? Our problem, <clears throat> excuse me, let's uh, talk about left and right, is um, let, uh, um, it looks like it says a minus six, right? And a minus six, you would think, if you're talking about a coordinate plane, the negative side's over here and the positive side's over here. So you would think moving to the left by six, okay? The actual answer is it's moving to the right by six. So here's why, okay? If the standard form for all transformations is x minus c, okay? plus D, right? So the C value, in this case, if I were to say, what did you plug in here to make this say X minus six, okay? You plugged in a value of positive six. If you plugged in a negative six here, it would say X minus negative six, and we would see a plus sign show up in the problem, okay? So here's the quick summary, if you like quick summaries, okay? Anytime you're talking about transformations to the left and right, 
if you see a minus six showing up in the problem, that actually means that it's moving in the positive direction, which is to the right. If you see a plus six show up, that means you're moving in the negative direction, which is to the left, okay? So it's uh, the, it, the left and right transformations are opposite of what you would think. When you see a minus sign, it's gonna go to the positive direction. When you see a plus sign, it will go to the negative direction. So something to be careful about for transformations, okay? All right, problem 45. It says, Toby wants to find uh, the volume of a toy soldier. He's doing that by uh, filling a rectangular container uh, with four centimeters of water. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, a cubic, uh, it's, I'm not sorry, it's a rectangular container, okay? Uh, and then he submerges the toy soldier and that causes the water depth, which was at four centimeters to go up to 6.6. .6. So here's basically what's happening. Okay, we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have this box, okay, that is eight, okay, uh, by six. If I kind of go, here's my back dimension, okay? Kind of goes like this, okay? The uh, back dimension is six, right? The whole thing is 10 centimeters tall, but I don't really care about that. I just care that the water is four tall, okay? So this this height currently is four. If I were to say what is the the volume of water currently, right? There Again, if you go to your formula sheet, volume is determined by just uh, uh, for cubes like this or rectangular prisms like this, uh, is, is determined by doing length times width times height, okay? So I'm just gonna go to my calculator and do six times four times eight, right, in any order, 192. So what that means is that the volume of water is currently 192 cubic centimeters, okay? Once we place the water in, I'm sorry, place the soldier in, the water's uh, height changes from four to 6.6, .6, okay? So if I said, what is the, the you know, volume of water now, I'm gonna do the same thing Okay, and I'm just gonna say, now I'm gonna do six uh, times 6.6 .6 times eight. Okay, six times 6.6, .6, which is the new height times eight. And that's gonna be 316.8, okay? So let's go back to our problem now and see how we're gonna apply that to get our answer. Okay, so we're gonna say that uh, with the six, we had three, 16.8, so we said the, the four volume one, let's kind of show them side by side, okay? Ah, we don't have to do that, right? So we're gonna say that it's 316.8, okay? So what we wanna figure out is by putting the toy soldier in, how much more volume did we create, right? So we're gonna subtract these two values, right? So if we do 316.8, okay, and we do minus uh, the 192, what we're left with is 124.8, Right? And it says to the nearest uh, cubic centimeter, right? that would be this 125. So that means that the actual soldier was 125 cubic centimeters. Okay? So this is a displacement problem. Okay? All right, problem number 46. Okay, this is a, a, a another volume problem. So here, let's just kind of summarize it without reading the whole thing. There is a cube shape that is 18 inches. So again, kind of like a, a rectangle right? that has the kind of back pieces like this. I'm not gonna try to draw it, it's not necessary. Um, it's got 18 on every side, right? So that's what an 18 inch cube is. We know that the base is 18, right? Let's see if I can try this one more time. And then when I go back, right, like this, okay, uh, the bases are also 18. Everywhere I go, there's an 18, right? So that's gonna be my cube, okay? Um, and then there is inside of that a cylinder, which I'm much better at drawing, right? Here's my cylinder, okay? <clears throat> that has a radius of six, okay? And it has a height of 12. And they're asking you, which of the following represents the packing material? So essentially, this cylinder is gonna go inside of this shape, okay? And what we care about is what space is left over inside of this cubic box after we put the cylinder inside, right? That's what the packing material is gonna be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the volume of the box, Okay, and from it, we're gonna subtract the volume of the cylinder, okay? And what's left over, that's gonna be the packing, okay? So again, this is a formula sheet problem. The volume of a cubic box is going to be side cubed or length times width times height. That's gonna be, in this case, 18 to the third power. 18 times 18 times 18, length times width times height, 18 cubed, okay? 
So from that, I'm going to subtract the cylinder. The cylinder is pi r squared, okay, pi r squared h. That's how I find the, air, the volume of a cylinder. So I'm going to say pi, our r value is 6 squared times the height, which they tell us is 12, okay? And that's going to be the packing material. So if you take a look at my choices, again, they, we don't want to do this first one, right? I'm not going to do radius times 18. I have three 18 cubes, okay? And it looks like this is the one that has r squared. So I'm going to say choice j, okay? So this is side cubed minus pi r squared h, right? And that would be choice j. All right, problem number 47. A room has a rectangular floor that is 15 by 21, right? What is the area in square yards, right? So this seems like a very simple problem. They just wanna know what is the, uh, the area of a rectangle that is 15 by 21, right? So if I go to my calculator, I'm not gonna show it, right? I'm just gonna do 15 times 21, okay? And I get 315. So the area of this is 315. But where they're gonna get you is the fact that the uh, dimensions are given in feet. Okay, so one thing you will need to use is that one uh, yard okay, is equal to three feet. Okay, so in order for me to figure out how many cubic yards this is, okay, I'm gonna actually say let's divide this uh, these dimensions by three, which would actually make it a seven, okay, by five, I'm sorry, seven by five, right? And that's gonna be 35 cubic yards. Okay, so be careful right, with the dimensions, sometimes they will ask you to do some kind of conversion, okay? Problem number 48, okay, so essentially, again, here's what's going on with this one. We have two charts. One represents uh, the amount of uh, fare that we're getting per uh, for a certain number of miles from ABC cabs. Same graph, but for a different taxi cab company, okay, and this is for one passenger, okay? So what they're saying is the graph shows one passenger in dollars for both cab companies up to six miles, okay? And when the uh, cab fares for the two cab companies are compared, what is the cheaper fare for a five mile trip? So I'm gonna go to five on the mileage part, which is this bottom section here, right? So I'm gonna say, um, if I go up from five, here's where I'm gonna hit on the graph, right? So if I go up, I hit these two points, okay? And if I do the same thing on five on the Terry taxi cabs, again, I hit two points, okay? So here's what you really need to take from this problem. Uh, an open circle means do not include that value. A filled in circle means do include that value. So this is what's called a step function or a step graph. Um, the actual point that we care about is the one that's filled in, the solid uh, point, okay? So I'm gonna say that ABC's cab fare uh, at five is $12. And I'm gonna say that for Terry Taxi Cab, it is only $9. They're saying, what's the cheaper fare? Well, it's gonna be $9, so choice G, okay? So that would be my answer for problem 48. Two more to go, problem 49. Okay, so this one says the graph of f of x consists of three line segments, and I can see those drawn for me. Uh, and it says, if I kind of skip through some of the, the standard x, y plane stuff, what is the area of the, uh, the region bounded by the graph, so that's these three lines, okay, one, two, three, and the positive y-axis and positive x-axis, that's this line and this line. So they really care about what is the area of all of this space, okay? So the way we're gonna do this is taking a look at this shape, I don't know how to find the area of shapes that look like this, okay? So I'm gonna break this up into shapes that I do know how to find the area of, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that, there's probably different ways to do it. I think the easiest way is to just draw a line right straight across here and cut this into essentially a trapezoid on the bottom and a little triangle, little right triangle on the top, okay? So for triangles, we're, I'm sorry, for trapezoids, we need to know the formula. So again, formula sheet it. It's gonna be one half height, okay? And that's gonna be B1 plus B2, okay? And so we're gonna need to figure out what these dimensions are. So um, you're gonna use the coordinates. If this is zero, zero, the origin, okay? And I went over to five, zero, that means this bottom line here, okay, is gonna be five units, okay? And then I can do the same thing at the top. I can say, okay, this is still at x equals zero, and then I go over to x equals three to get to the other end of this piece here. So that's gonna have a three. Those are b1 and b2. So it's gonna be three and five, okay, for my two bases, okay? The height is the distance from the bottom base to the top base. And again, I can see that I'm starting at a y value of zero, and I'm ending right here 
right? Which I can see kind of by looking over is at a height of three as well, right? So I'm gonna say that my height is three, and then I got this one half, right? So if I multiply these together, this is eight times three times one half, and that's gonna be 12, right? So the area of the trapezoid is 12 square units, okay? I can do the same thing with this little triangle. It starts at a height of three, a y value of three, and it ends at a y value of four, right? So I know that, right? And again, I can see that this goes from uh, zero, um, uh, an x value of zero to this point, which is an x value of two. So this is a two by one. So I'm gonna kind of pull this one, it's a little tough to see, right? So this one, the, the uh, bottom part is gonna be a length of two units. And then I'm only going from a height of three to a height of four, so that's gonna be one unit. Okay, to find the area of a triangle, we're gonna say that area is equal to one half base times height. Well, my base is two, my height is one, and, and then that half, so that looks like it's gonna be half of two, which is one, one times one, this area is equal to one, okay? So if I know that the two areas are 12 and one, if I add together those two unoverlapping areas, we get a total of 13. Okay, all right, last problem. Okay, the sum of two positive numbers is 151. The lesser number is 19 more than the square root of the greater number. What is the value of the greater number minus the lesser number? Okay, so this one I'll tell you is a fairly complex problem. Okay, but we'll go through it together and kind of show you uh, the steps you'll need to do, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna notice is they say the sum of the positive numbers is 151. So I'm just gonna say x plus y pick whatever letters you want, equals 151. And I'm just gonna make a little note that this one is the less, uh, this one's the greater, and this one's the lesser, right? So just to remind myself which one I'm kind of designating as each, okay? So then what they say is the lesser number, okay, I've said that that's L, right? That's gonna be Y equals, okay, 19 more than the square root of the greater number. Well, the square root of the greater number would be the square root of X, okay? And it's 19 more than that, so that's plus 19. Okay, so I've been able to write two equations from the information they gave me. One is that if I add them together, I get 151. And the second one is that the smaller number is the square root of x plus 19. Okay, this is a system of equations. So what I'm gonna do is if I know what y equals, it's this thing, okay, I'm gonna take this and plug it in uh, right here, okay? But I'm kind of looking at that and saying, oh, that'll be ugly to have x and a square root and all that. So you know what, maybe I don't wanna do that. Let's change this around a little bit. Let's subtract the 19 to the other side, okay? And then that equals the square root of x. And then if I get, get rid of the square root, it's gonna say squared and squared, okay? So instead, x is gonna be equal to y minus 19 squared, okay? And I like dealing with squareds a lot more than I like dealing with square roots when I'm solving because we have a lot of solving methods that deal with squares, okay? So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the x value all the way up here in this original equation, and I'm gonna replace x with y minus 19 squared. So here's what this first equation is gonna look like now. It's gonna say, instead of x, y minus 19 squared, okay? And then I'm gonna say plus y, right, equals 151. And my job is to solve this problem, okay? And once we solve this, we'll find out what y is, and then it'll be really easy to then figure out what x is, okay? So the first thing we need to do for this solving is to square y minus 19. So just to remind you, y minus 19 squared is y minus 19 times another y minus 19, okay? You cannot just square y and square 19. You have to do the FOIL. So this is gonna kind of end up being y squared minus uh, 38, okay, y plus Okay, and then we need to do 19 times 19. Let me grab my calculator for that one. I don't know that off the top of my head. 19 squared is 361. So I'm gonna say this is really plus 361, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, let's not forget, okay? That was just y minus 19 squared. We still have this plus y and the 151, okay? So that was the first step was to square y minus 19. Now I'm gonna do some combining like terms and I'm gonna subtract this 151 to the other side. So it's gonna say y squared, negative 38y plus y is negative 37y, okay? And then I'm gonna subtract 151 uh, from both sides, because whenever we do things like factoring, which is what this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna end up uh, wanting it to be equal to zero. So if I do this subtraction, I get plus 210, okay? So I need to factor this, and if you don't remember how to factor this, 
what we're going to do is we're going to find out what multiplies to okay, 210 and adds up to negative 37. We're finding a pair of numbers. Once we find that pair of numbers, we're going to place them inside of these parentheses. Okay, and then that'll give us our answer. So it's going to be y and y, and then we have to figure out what these numbers are. So here's a nice little calculator trick for you. If you're trying to figure out factors of 210, okay, if you go to your calculator okay, and you go to this y equals button at the top, okay, I've already done it, but I'll start over. If I type in the number I want to, to find a list of factors of, in this case 210, okay, and I divide by x, okay, and then I go to the table. So if you notice in the top right corner, right above graph, it says, uh, second graph, which will show me the table. Okay, these this list of numbers. Anytime you see a pair of numbers, an x and a y, that are both whole numbers, meaning not decimals, that is a pair of factors. Okay, so I'm going to look at this list and say, can I find a pair of numbers that adds up to 37? Right, and so if I'm looking through the list, 30 and 7 are popping up on the list for me. Right. And so I'm kind of saying, okay, well, it's going to be 30 and 7. Let me just look at the rest of the list. I don't see anything else, so I'm going to go with 30 and 7. Okay, so we're going to say x minus 30 okay, and x minus 7. That's going to work to give me 210. Okay, so let's get rid of our calculator. Okay, so if I solve this, here's what I get. Okay, I'm going to say this is y equals 30, right? If I set this expression equal, okay, and I'm going to get y equals 7. Okay, so it's kind of weird. We're getting two answers for y, right? So let's kind of put these to the test. If y was 30, here's what I'm left with, right? If y is 30 and I say x plus y equals 151, well, if y is 30, that means that x has to be 121, right, to make 151, right? The other possibility for x plus y is maybe x is 7, okay? I'm sorry, y is 7, okay? And so that would make this, uh, 144, okay? So this looks like my, my two uh, sets of numbers. So the question is, which one of these, what is the value of the greater number minus the smaller number? Which of these is showing up on the list, right? If I do 144 minus seven, I don't get any of these numbers, right? So even though this is a pair of answers, it's not a pair of answers that I can subtract greater minus lesser and get any of these. But if I do 121 minus 30, this other pair, I get 91. So that's our answer, okay? So we're gonna go with choice letter J as our answer to this last problem. Problem number 50, we're almost there. Okay, this is, uh, we'll, we'll do six, uh, 51 through 60 in the very last video. We're done uh, section five, right? So uh, view video six, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them into the, the comments below. I, I check them on a near daily basis, uh, and I'd love to get your, your comments about any of these questions.